क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोज फ्रॉम ई कीडा हेलो फ्रेंड्स I welcome you all to this video. We are with the last topic from the chapter number 13, and up till now in this particular chapter 13, we have the various measurements associated to the various parameters as like the frequency, power, VSWR, attenuation, phase shift, the impedance, the insertion loss, and some others. We have also been introduced to the various microwave devices and the compounds which are helpful for all these measurement purposes. So these were this slotted line. There it was the mention of the tunable detector here. We have also been known to the power meter, the wave meter. The frequency meter we have seen, the network analyzer, the spectrum analyzer we have been reported, the reflectometer technique, the use of the RF substitution method for the impedance measurement we have all reported in this particular chapter here. Now the last topic, let us have the calculation of the Q factor which is called as the quality factor which is for the cavity type of the microwave resonator. So let us see the details. So here we start with our topic, the topic titled Q factor measurement of cavity resonator. So in this particular title, the cavity resonator, so we have dedicated one complete chapter for understanding what exactly the resonators are for the microwave signal. So cavity resonators are the essential modifications from the waveguides here. So waveguides are nothing but the hollow metallic tubes. So these are open at the two ends there I can say. So depending on the cross section, the names corresponding to the waveguides are there, rectangular waveguide and circular waveguide. Hence closing both the ends with the help of short circuited plates we get the cavity resonator, hence the corresponding names rectangular cavity resonator and this circular cavity resonator. So for the resonator, we have a quality factor denoted by Q here. So for cavity resonator, the Q factor can be of the three types here. So if we don't have the resonator connected to the external circuitry, that time we represent the quality factor by unloaded quality factor denoted Q sub x0. When it is connected to certain external circuitry for coupling, so that time we have the quality factor denoted by Q sub x ext. And the combination of the two, the relationship given in 1 upon QL is equal to 1 upon Q0 added to 1 upon QXT gives us Q sub x L value depending on these two, this is called as loaded quality factor here. So now for the cavity resonator, we have to make the measurement of the quality factor. So practically we shall be requiring the value of loaded quality factor. Now to look at the different alternatives with which how we can have the measurement of this quality factor, we have the three options. So option number one is to go with transmission method. The option number two is to use the impedance measurement technique and the third alternative to us is that we should have the transient. So as we know that impedance is having the opposition to the flow of the current or somehow it provides the association in terms of the phase changes also. So having the greater value of the impedance, we have the dissipation associated with the losses. So in general, if we define the quality factor Q, it is omega, the angular frequency in multiplication to the ratio of the energy stored. So energy stored can be of the electric form and that of the magnetic form also. So W sub x E for electric, W sub x M for magnetic and the energy dissipated in general can be denoted as W sub x D. So the energy dissipated per unit cycle can be the power dissipation here. So storage versus the dissipation that is nothing but the quality factor and we always want the quality factor for the cavity resonators to be at higher values here. Now out of the three methods, the transmission method is one of the simplest one we shall be discussing here. 
So in the transmission method, usually into the microwave test bench, we have the microwave source at the left hand side connected to the pad here and then the transmission line device which most possibly we prefer to have the slotted line which is basically a rectangular waveguide here. So instead of having a slotted or a rectangular waveguide in general, we use here the transmission device to be the cavity resonator for which the quality factor is to be measured here and after the cavity resonator we have the connection to that of detector and finally to the power indicator here. Now for such arrangement of the various microwave components for the measurement of quality factor here the output signal is to be measured which should be a function of frequency value so frequency denoted f here. So the plot corresponding to the behavior of this particular system can be obtained. So in this plot onto the horizontal axis we have taken the entire range of the frequency whereas the output power is plotted onto the vertical axis here. So here it is the curvature we obtain and corresponding to this particular diagram that has been plotted the output power uh, with the frequency. So at the resonance condition we can call this to be the resonance curve here. Now from the resonance curvature, we can have the determination of the half power bandwidth here. So half power bandwidth can be denoted by twice delta and twice delta is equal to nothing but inverse of the loaded quality factor in plus minus. So the QL that it is the loaded quality factor QL can be taken onto the left hand side and we are left with plus minus 1 upon twice delta. So this can also be expressed as QL is equal to plus minus we have omega divided by twice of in the bracket omega minus omega 0. So omega is the generalized angular frequency of the microwave signal whereas omega 0 is nothing but the resonant frequency. So here if we have good coupling between the input devices that it means the microwave source and the transmission device that it is the cavity resonator and also the good coupling at the output side with the detector and that of the cavity resonator. So that time we can have also neglected the external circuitry effect and we can relate QL to that of the Q0 called as unloaded quality factor. But to see such a simple circuitry for the measurement of the quality factor, the method seems to be somewhat approximate here. The accuracy level is quite low in determination of the quality factor here. So I hope this much of addressing for the various measurement parameters and the corresponding techniques is sufficient to conclude this particular chapter. So after the microwave measurements that we have covered in this chapter number 13, by the next lecture we shall start with the new chapter. The chapter will be titled Monolithic Microwave Integrated Circuits and the details with respect to the monolithic type of the microwave integrated circuits we shall be addressing under this subject microwave engineering. For more such information and the details if you want to like to have in this particular domain microwave engineering, you can subscribe to EGEDA channel. Thank you.